I'm Clyde Lewis. You are listening to Ground Zero. Time to ride on the retro. Time to invert time and realize that maybe, and I've always felt this somewhere deep inside of me, if you search your feelings, search your deep unconscious mind and understand that for some reason we are preparing for an event that's already happened. And it was a horrible event. And not very many people survived it. And so this is why time is short for those who are in power. Take a look back at the 9-11 attacks. Nearly 3,000 people died as a direct result of the attacks on the World Trade Center. The person responsible, we are told, was Osama bin Laden. This is the same Osama bin Laden that allegedly led the Mujahideen, the group that was crucial in wearing down the Soviets in the Russian-Afghanistan war. The very same war that some say facilitated the fall of Soviet communism at the end of the 1980s. So, looking back in a retrocausal way, when communism fell in 1989, it was 3,000 people that were sacrificed in 2001 that may have influenced the outcome because of our relationship with bin Laden. The Mujahideen evolved into Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups like ISIS. So the question is whether or not you believe that an event in 2001 affected events in 1989. (laughs) Logically, it's insane to even suggest it. But blowback. Blowback happens when you tamper with the laws of time And that tends to create problems for the practitioners because they have to sacrifice people, sacrifice timelines in order to get things back into balance. It's all about balancing the role of entropy in self-organizing systems. We're obviously in an occult war, and the evidence is mounting to that that, that conclusion. Physicists renowned as John Wheeler, Richard Feniman, uh, Dennis uh, Sciamma, and and Yakir Aharonov have speculated that causality is a two-headed arrow, and the future might influence the past. Furthermore, another example of what I see happening that strikes at a bit of parapolitical prescraft. We live in the moment, and we're not aware of the magic tricks that are being used to get us to adapt to a new way of thinking. Well, governments make friends and then turn on them. Okay, so we're making friends with Zelensky right now, right? Eventually, it could, knowing our patterns, we could say that Zelensky may be a future enemy. Now, we don't want to think it, but it's something that needs to be considered, like Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein and uh, Osama bin Laden. This is how you play the game of retrocausality. And so governments make friends, they and those friends turn on them. But there needs to be a communal brainwashing in order to get regular people to unite in hating the other. The group that is vilified and scapegoated for problems that we have created ourselves. Think about this. We were in a Cold War for many years, and then the wall came down, and suddenly we felt like we had some sort of kinship with Russia. But now that Russian relationship has changed. What was once an adversarial country, or at least a country that we'd like to compete with, has turned into the enemy now, again. We had friendships with Mikhail Gorbachev. We had friendships with several others. Putin, we even had friendships with him. Then after Donald Trump left, bam. Russiagate became reality. Communal brainwashing led to the reality of the Kremlin being the evil in the world. What if I were to tell you that the future is already affecting the present, and as George Orwell said, He who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. I'm going to add that those who are cocksure of the future, they're already affecting the present is what they're doing. A future event has already happened, and we're the victims experiencing it now. And once that future event catches up with us, we will know why we were forced into tyranny. And this kind of thinking is something that's called entanglement. It's a signature feature of quantum mechanics. The word entanglement has the same connotations as a romantic entanglement, 
a special and potentially troublesome relationship eventually happens, especially if some future event or cataclysm is forcing us into a pattern and the only answer is to have authoritarian rule. I mean, this would explain the expediency of the meetings of the so-called movers and shakers of the world in places like Davos or the Bilderberg meeting we had to talk about or we talked about a few days ago. Something is in the planning. And that something's already happened. The event already happened, and we are in a reverse causal course of trying to prepare for a darker paradigm that resembles a dark mirror image of what we are in now. Retrocausal models have forced physicists to reconsider longstanding taboos in affording a role for future events in the present day. It joins a fine thought stretching to Plato, Aristotle, and others. They argue that nature, like man, is organized around final ends and goals. Just as the purpose of the baker is to bake, the purpose of the raindrop is to fall, and of the seed to grow into a tree. These so-called theological approaches fell out of the scientific mainstream when Newton and his contemporaries proved you could predict the future of natural objects using only present circumstances. There was no explicit role for the future. Only There, there wasn't even a need for it. With retrocausality, though, physics may be forcing a very old idea back into the conversation. It could be retromagic. It could be anything. Working on the present. A Luciferian brotherhood working its magic to program us for a new age of enlightenment. But it could be a lot of other things, too. And you just need to notice the indications of what it might be.